and I am a training coordinator here at AAP, and I will be opening and closing this webinar. Today's topic is about PBS, and the presenter, Jani Heikkonen, has been a long-term AAP project manager. If you have any comments, please use the chat window, and Jani will answer your questions uh, after his presentation. Without further ado, Jani, welcome. Thank you, Anna, for the wonderful introduction. I'm, I'm Jani Heikkonen, as she mentioned. Um, I have been in the industry since 97. I worked in the uh, United States for eight of those years. Uh, I have been a project manager pretty much the whole time. I did some time in uh, DTP. And um, uh, let me start out with a little story. Um, PDFs were first started in 93, or the product came out. And I started as a project manager in 97, and we were doing um, localizations for a huge medical company and the affiliate reviews that we did for 10 languages, we had to do FedEx packages. Uh, so it was a lot of photocopying and, and sending out packages to the clients. And um, I was actually the one who started pushing towards doing the reviews in PDF files and sending those out in email formats. So obviously that saved a lot of money for the company and everybody's quite pleased and, uh, and that's how I that's how I started my my working career working on PDF. So maybe that's the reason part of the reason why I'm here talking to you guys. So let's let's get this show on the road. Um, so what is a PDF file? Well, it's really a, a flat image file that you can make out of uh, Microsoft Word or Adobe Illustrator or InDesign document or whatever. Um, and uh, you can use commenting features on it, but the bad things about it is that you really can't move things around or you cannot edit the text or change the pictures, etc. So as I mentioned, you can generate them in applications, uh, Microsoft Word being one of them. And um, the other type of format that PDFs usually take is a scanned image or image-based uh, PDF file. And those are usually done from a paper copy. You put it through a scanner, and it spits out a uh, PDF file for you. And those are really difficult to handle or localize. You have to use a software to use the text recognition uh, to be able to get, take the text out of them. And uh, sometimes that can get, uh, it cannot recognize all the characters correctly, and et cetera. So uh, we won't talk too much about that today. I could. I could discuss this for hours on end here, so I have to keep this short. Um, so why are they needed? Uh, really, any kind of a printing house will require print PDFs um, to produce the magazines or whatever of this paper. And another one is obviously for the web. You cannot be uploading Microsoft Word documents or InDesign documents onto HTML. So let's do some good on the bad of the PDFs. Uh, a lot of these things I already mentioned, uh, cross-platform usability and law system requirements, and all, pretty much any one of these is applicable to the, um, to the one that uh, you, can, you can pretty much use the PDFs on a, on a laptop, on a cellular phone, on whatever kind of, if the same document will work on any, any, sort, of, any sort of program. So, and even today, the um, Adobe has introduced into the reader that you can actually even add voice comments to the, the PDF files. And the last two are probably the greatest benefits that you can have, is that what you see is what you get. Um, the documents, when you open up the PDF file, the fonts and everything will sit, stay exactly in the same spot as you put them in. If you open up a Word document, for example, in a different computer that doesn't have the correct fonts, you will not see it, see it as it's been produced. And um, even with today's great email and all this FTP and all this technology, the file size requirement for PDF files is quite low and it will, it will open up even uh, on, a, on your phone or tablet or, or whatever. And uh, you can uh, go to the store and get, a, get it as a freeware, freeware application. So what are the, some, of the, some of the bad things or not so good things about PDFs? Uh, this especially pertains to the localization industry. 
um, they're really uneditable unless you have a full version of Adobe, and even then, they're not really nice to use. Uh, adding pages is pretty much impossibility, or adding um, text to pages that doesn't have much extra room, uh, text and image localization, um, and also uh, this is a this is a, one of the main parts of this discussion is that why why do you need to pay extra uh, usually when localizing PDF files and We'll have some slide towards the end that touched on touch on this why why do additional cost incur? Okay, so we have some clients online, we have some coworkers, etc. And uh, some of these challenges that any project manager or you may have faced. Uh, somebody's requesting that can we have a source file of this PDF that this PDF file is not very easy to localize. So um, somebody else owns the rights to the files. Uh, it may be a printing house that doesn't allow you to, to touch their pictures or fonts and etc. Then there's also the, uh, this has come quite a few times in my few years in the localization industry, is that people cannot locate the original files. So let's say uh, uh, you have a company in France that is producing the actual product, so you may have some difficulty in, in getting the files from them. And then also the source files are too, too large, and you cannot get them in email. Um, go to the next slide. So based on these challenges, how can we help localize our PDF files? Uh, I guess I need to speak up a little bit uh, hold on, it's kind of close. Um, so, things we need to know as a localization company is what is the reproduction? You have this PDF file that you're going to send to us. Uh, where is it needed? Is it going to be needed to be printed? Is it used for the web or possibly both? And what is the quality of the output desired? Is it a black and white output? Is it a color? Uh, what is the target audience? This is especially important. Uh, where is it used? Is it a application that person might buy from a store, or is it for a um, person who's installing uh, an air duct or whatever, whatever you may have? Um, so that's really important to know, and, because that will also determine the quality of the of the output. Is it a, is it printed on a black and white piece of A4 paper, or is it a magazine high classy print, etc. So those are kind of the important informations that any project manager should ask you. Uh, if you haven't already told us uh, how to how to how to how to go about localizing this um, quality of the layout, um, some some difficulties we we face here, especially in cases where the PDF file may have really low quality pictures, and um, you may want to print it on a classy paper. Well, obviously, the quality of the picture does not allow for that, or it'll become a little bit granulated and not so high quality. Um, then we have had cases where clients just want the information. They have some, some people at their company who do not speak English so well, or the document is in Finnish and they want it in English, um, and they don't really care about the picture, so we'll just do pretty much a text export and translation and, and send out a Word file without any graphics or anything like that. So that's really the, the cheapest option, uh, and obviously the easiest and quickest to do. Um, and just to clarify that uh, from a web quality PDF, um, you, you really cannot print a high, high quality print uh, output for you for, um, from a PDF. Um, it totally depends on the resolution of the images in the PDF file, what we can do. So let's take a look at some examples. Just These are just textual examples. There's not anything pictures or anything like that. And these are just really basics of localizing PDF files, uh, some of the things that uh, we have to take into account with any kind of a project that we do. So here's the, here's the ugly, so to say. So I have a screenshot here on the left of a PDF file. That's just a table, two by three table. You have some text here on the top. It doesn't matter even if you don't speak the language. And then we have um, two by two descriptions below. And here is the exported text 
in, in Word document. And I've boxed these couple of places here. And these are actually the headlines here. You cannot, well, the, the white text is coming out into Word as white. So it translated, it's going to be translating this. They're going to be easily skipping skipping through this part and not, not translate. So when we put it back in, we start to notice that, oops, we're missing some translations. And also to a trained eye, you may notice these carriage return marks here. And it's breaking up the sentences. And again, making translators' life uh, not quite living hell, but uh, more difficult than it, than it needs to be. So let's go on to the next slide. And here is a form that we've done. You may want to put this to full screen, uh, but the main main point in this are these arrows here, or these well, lines, I guess. I didn't put arrows there. Uh, this part of text here on the top right, the top left, I'm sorry, is in, about in the middle of the document when it should really be here on the middle part in the top. So once again, just to clarify, we have the PDF here on the, on the, on the first third. In the middle, we have a copy paste or an extracted text out of this PDF file. And here on the right, we have the AAC prepared form that's uh, in the source file format and can be produced as a PDF file for the client. So you can see that things go haywire when we localize PDF files. And to this day, I can promise and say that the full word of confidence being in five different localization companies is that this is pretty much that every localization company struggles with when localizing PDF files. There is no holy grail found as to how to auto fully automate the process. And there's always some sort of human involvement needed in terms of getting PDFs out, you know, text out of PDFs and put them back into either PDF or Illustrator or, or whatnot. Um, so you have to remember that. So what does this, what does this mean? We can definitely help uh, as you handle any kind of PDF, uh, whether it's those scanned documents. Uh, we can we can do some modification from PDF into uh, Word or InDesign that you can easily work on it yourself. Uh, we have tools. Uh, we have a great engineering team here at the AAC who can um, easily export the text out and put it put it back in. Um, and but here again, as a little caveat, um, there is always some sort of uh, text setting work needed on these documents. And it's whether it's sort of hidden in the translation cost, uh, but AAC always tries to be clear in, in their billing and show that what, what is this additional work, so called additional work, as it's required. So I wouldn't really call it additional. Um, so that's. That's it on that. And uh, don't be don't be shy. Be in touch. Um, we will go step by step. And if any one of you want any further information on this issue, and I can even have a the webinar tools here that we have doesn't really allow me to show in detail these things, and I have to talk them through. And I hope I've been clear uh, in my explanation to you that uh, what 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 does it take to localize PDF files um, and I guess that's about it and I want to thank you for your time um, my contact information is there you can also get to us through the website and I leave this for Anna now uh, thank you again for your time much appreciated goodbye thank you Yanni uh, that was really informative, and I hope uh, you didn't have too much trouble in with the sound because I had a few comments that that the sound was not that good at this time. But hopefully, if you had any questions, you can contact Yanni. And uh, from my part, I want to thank you. And uh, if you have uh, questions or want to know more about AAC, you can go to our website and after this presentation you will actually be directed to our website. And there are also information on our other business areas including translation and localization and language training. And 
for now, I want to wish you all happy holidays and I hope that in 2015 you will all join us again uh, and listen to our webinars on new exciting subjects. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.